Enduro Method is an online strength and conditioning program built for those who ride by those who ride. We are professional coaches dedicated to building the best and most revolutionary off and on the bike training for dirt bikers around. Enduro Method offers a monthly subscription, which gives you access to our ongoing current training program. By subscribing to Enduro Method, you receive our Iron Track, which is for those who have a gym or gym equipment, and our Gravity Track for those with minimal to no equipment. We design our training for riders who want to keep their general physical preparedness in top form year round. If you are interested in joining the monthly Enduro Method training subscription, we are offering a special discount for our podcast listeners. Use discount code EMPODCAST23 in all caps for 50% off your first month of training. See the show notes where you can find discount codes and a link for more information and to sign up for Enduro Method. And now, on to the show. Welcome back to the show. My guests today are Joe Namath and Mesa Lang, race directors for the Moab Hard Enduro. Expect to learn what is in store at the first ever Moab Hard Enduro, from racing format to track layout, distances, and difficulty. They cover all the details, everything from camping, spectating, payouts, and of course, a lot of info on how the race course has been designed and provide ample details on what to expect. Enjoy. All right, we're up. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I was just going to say that um, we obviously knew beforehand that there was a lot that goes into the into uh, like putting a race on, um, but it is just like racing a hard enduro where like you can talk about it all you want, but until you do it, um, you really don't know uh, like what it's really about. And uh, we're definitely finding that out. It's a, it's a lot of work, but uh, yeah, it's it's been fun. It's been a learning experience and uh, it's going to be good. We're going to have a good first year. Nice. With the location, I haven't spent a lot of time in Moab. Been there a couple of times. Ah, maybe just once to ride. Anyways, what I've seen from photos and what I was expecting from it is a little bit different. Like the terrain looks pretty awesome. Less like big slick rock and more kind of rustic creeks and washes. And I don't know, just way more sand and I guess dirt than I was kind of expecting. Yeah. Um the properties at like between 6,500, 7,500 feet and Moab's at 4,000 feet. So oh, it's, wow. and that's where the difference comes from. Uh, it's right at the base of the LaSalle mountains. And, uh, uh, it is definitely the elevation. There's lots of trees. There's lots of, it's definitely not mo- very much like Moab. It's there's the there's a little red rock here and there, but it's more to me like Southern Colorado, um, as far as the train goes. Is this something you had kind of had your eye on previously? I mean, like leading up to it, and then that you've been toying with for a couple of years. Like, hey, it'd be really cool to do something here. Um, so I I had been there a few times. Um, the property is uh under new management and ownership and uh before it was kind of dormant um they had some like legal issues other things um that was stopping them from really being like open to the public in the sense that they are now like you know all avenues open like you can go there you can pay a hundred dollars you can camp you can ride you can do whatever you want there now um so i hadn't really thought of it too much and then mark from climb is a huge reason why this is happening and then and matt and josh from usr enduro all of those guys wanted around here and us living here they like we all kind of came in together and decided that like this could be a possibility and then we just kind of went from there and um that was last november nice. that we were, like, started to put everything together and uh yeah so i hadn't really thought too much about it to be honest but um after mark brought it mark's actually the one that brought it up like he's like first and foremost he was like i think we should do this thing here and uh we were like uh okay let's do it (laughs) (laughs) so yeah no i'm stoked that it 
that it kind of fell into our lap in, in, in a sense. Yeah. So let uh, walk us through the weekend. We got Saturday first, like a prologue, um, not a prologue, but like race one, I guess you'd say. Yeah. So Friday, um, people can come in to the property and there's track walk on Friday. Um, and that's going to start at, um, so the gates will open at 9 a.m. on Friday for people to start coming in. And then probably sometime just after that, you can start track walking. Um, and uh, there'll just be no moto, no motorized things, no side-by-sides, no dirt bikes for track walk. You can mountain bike, e-bike, um, hike. Uh, and then Saturday is when the first first race on Saturday and um we are considering it a prologue it's uh everyone races Sunday everyone transfers over um so it's just for starting position um and it's gonna be uh best guess at this point is six miles um open but challenging I'm trying to keep it uh you know us racing all the stuff we hear all the complaints and one that we hear a lot about different races is the prologues being too easy, faster people, um, that are coming from outside the series, they qualify in front of the series guys, and then they get into the main race and cause bottlenecks. It's like kind of something that, um, you know, there's a lot of different opinions about that, but, uh, I'm trying to keep the prologue challenging but open pass passing lanes we probably won't be on much single track there is single track there that all the single track on property is put in for the race by me so um there's quite a bit of it for sunday but we're gonna we're, we'll have a little on on saturday but um we're gonna try to keep it open and and racy uh but still challenging and it's a three hour cutoff on saturday for the qualifier so nice. we'll Three hours to complete one lap, six miles. Okay. Is everybody on the same course? Are there any splits on Saturday? Uh, no, everyone's on the same course. Um, and I wanted to do two at a time uh, for the start, but I think it's going to be five. It's just so much time. Yeah. Uh, like, but two, at a, I mean, to be honest, if I had it my way, I'd do it one at a time. <laughs> Like one like, every 15 seconds or something. Exactly. Like there, yeah. there's around, um, uh, in Texas, what was it? Revlimiter. Revlimiter did it one at a time and it was, I thought it was sweet. Like, yeah. um, just like straight up race the course. No, I mean, you obviously see people out there, but you know, it's just you versus terrain, not you versus other people. And then, you know, the main race is where you get uh, get to race everybody. Right. So you're you're planning on five per row for Saturday. Yeah. And then will that be like every 30 seconds or something? Yeah. Yep. And then um, also, since on Sunday, there are quite a few pro A splits. Um, we're keeping pros and A's separate from b's so um the starting and, and th that brings me to another point the starting order on saturday is based off class and series points um so pros first a second um if you don't have series points it's sign up order um and then we'll rack everybody up that way and uh i think that's the fairest for everybody um given the people that are chasing the series uh, a little bit of advantage um, because uh, they're, they're doing it for points and, and, and everything else. So I think that makes sense to me. And uh, then and where was I going with that? Um, and then when you start on Sunday, you'd start within your class. Oh yeah. So we're keeping, so A's can qualify in front of pros but B's can't qualify in front of A's or pros. So the B's and C's are separate from the A's and pros. 
Um, and that's just um, to keep the splits. So, um, you know, if we had a, if we had B's mixed in with A's on the start for Sunday, then we'd have people chaotically splitting off to like the pro A sections. So, right. You know, so it's just trying to keep the pros and A's in front of the B's um, for the first lap. And then, of course, it being a multi lap race on Sunday, um, there will be lappers. So people need to um, realize where they're at and that, you know, there's going to be people coming around that are fast, a lot faster than you for some people. And, uh, right. you know, just to be aware of that. Right. And that the start will be time adjusted anyways. Right. So there's no Correct. big deal about, you know, staying, starting in your class according to where you finished or whatever. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Cool. So six, six miles, roughly three hour cutoff on Saturday. Yeah. And I think that it'll be hard for like C's, especially this is like, um, as much as I was saying before about it being challenging, um, it is like a race for the C's. So for C's, Sunday is going to be hard, um, of course. But um, Saturday is just another chance for them to get some some more racing in and more miles in. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a fun one. I, I think that it's going to race really good. Nice. And then Sunday, you got, I saw a six hour cutoff on there. Is that, how are you doing the, you said multi-lap on that one? Yeah. Yep. So um, it'll be six hour cutoff based off last person off the gate. Um, so that, that last person will have a full six hours. Everyone else will have a little more, but um, yeah, it'll be, it's either going to be three or four laps. We're trying to figure that out right now. There's a lot of sections like, uh, you know, us battling with the short amount of time we've had to prepare for this and the winter months being less than optimal at 7,500 feet. Um, you know, we, we have lots of sections in the works and I'm trying to get as many done as I possibly can. So, um, the course is still changing a bit and, uh, and, um, yeah, so it's going to be three or four laps and we'll release that information as soon as we know, basically, I want the top pros to be out there for three hours at least. Yeah. And what's the rough out, uh, mileage for the, the Sunday, you think, uh, 12 miles mm -hmm. for A's and pros a little less than that, probably for, um, for the B's and C's because of the splits. Right. And then each each lap is the same. Um, there's no like addition or anything. But once you go through one lap, you'll see everything, and then it's the same. Or you adding stuff on laps. There's only one addition, and it's going to be on the last lap, and it's going to be right before the finish. Yeah. So, um, and everyone will just go through that um, on their last lap. Right, kind of like they did at Grinding Stone Race Three this year exactly yeah that, that last climb it'll be right before the finish as well so it's it's black flag for a while it was the it was the hardest legal trail in the country um but i the holes are so big down in the canyon that i've made some fun like side hill single track stuff like seriously the canyon you know king like to reference king of motos there's pretty much nothing there's no canyons out there that trucks can do that we can't do um that is very much not the case here um like it's just well you could do it like it's possible like cody tristan Ryder, all those guys could get up it for sure um but like bike swallowing holes yeah with no other options so like you have to like ride like a off camber boulder, you know, to like, and you have to get to another boulder. And if you don't get to that, then you fall into a hole that you can't ever get out of <laughs> so, like Jeep size holes. So, um, I, I didn't think that sounded super fun 
for most people so we're we're avoiding that <laughs> <laughs> but i i still the canyon's so cool i had to use it and i made single track like on the edges of the boulder so it's like dirt rock mix um like super not what you would expect in a desert hard enduro it's like there are sections where you're like thinking that it's a mountain enduro like hard enduro so like switch backing on dirt roots trees log crossings and then straight back down into the desert feel of like the normal like tons of traction and big rocks big ledges yeah it looks really cool i was uh didn't know what to expect when it was announced because i didn't know where it was and then once you guys started posting some photos it looked looks awesome yeah area bfe is a really cool spot they are and rob the owner has been awesome to work with um you know he's it's it's crazy to think about the um what it takes to run something like that in an area like this um you know for instance a acre of commercial property in moab is you know two to five million dollars so this property is almost 400 acres and going to be 750 for next year um so managing a property of this size and and it in this area is like kind of mind-boggling it's a uh, pretty cool that we have this opportunity and um yeah it's, it's it's not you know as everybody knows there's a lot of trails getting closed down everywhere but we felt it here recently with you know 300 plus miles of trail closure so um you know it, it just makes it all the better that something like this is open and available to the public to let it come out and come out and, and enjoy it because it's 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 really a cool property and they're just expanding too. like you know right now there's no full hookup spots available so it'll be dry camping uh, for everybody out there camping is free camping's free for spectators um so it's ten dollar gate fee is all that a spectator would pay um to come and enjoy um the weekend racing um so i think that's pretty cool just to um come check it out and uh yeah and it's so spectator friendly as well um we're gonna have a spectator loop with access via mountain bike emtb and dirt bikes um that's our goal it's really cool. Even from the parking lot, you can see a bunch of the different areas, and that's really, really great. Uh, the parking is amazing. I mean, you can get a semi in there super easy. Access is great. Uh, we're going to have a really big vendor area um, that's just dug into the rocks and looks really cool, like kind of like unlike anything else. Um, and the camping is going to be, obviously, he said it's free for everyone who's coming. Um, and it's just really special. It's kind of a big area near the Enduro Cross. Um, we're doing a Stay Sick Kids race on Saturday after the prologue's finished, officiated by Cody Webb. Stay Sick, um, they donated seven bikes and um, two people that race will get to walk away and take a bike home. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to get as many kids out there as we can, especially from the neighborhood and family members and just make it a family fun event. We'll have some food vendors, some bike vendors and just a lot of other stuff kind of happening in the area. Um, just really good for just our general Moab spot. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if the exact number, but I think we have, you know, 15 plus vendors coming out, different shops and um, businesses, different moto businesses doing uh that will have vendor areas. So um, it's going to be a cool vibe. Uh, eventually you know as this grows we want it to become uh not only a race but just a like a gathering of the you know hard enduro industry um where everybody comes out and and kind of uh like just enjoys the racing and you know trying to make it just appealing for people that are aren't only racers but 
just enjoy riding hard trail and then come to moab and there's so much to do here um that you can come out and and make a vacation out of it and just you know build it around like spectating the the races and and then going on your own rides before and after yeah because um the town is only 20 minutes away so moab's only 20 minutes away tons of great restaurants really good hotels the road in is is really mellow and in in 20 minutes you can be up to the property it's super easy um and we're just excited to have kind of everybody out and see the area like arches national park is another five minutes away from town so you know bring the whole family it's going to be a cool time yeah Nice. One of my buddies who's coming out to race, he's a A rider guy, but he was uh he was like, Hey, um, you know, Joe's putting that race together. What do you think it's gonna be like? Like, um, do you think we're gonna be able to ride it? Or is it gonna be <laughs> like, is he gonna be, you know, putting in stuff that only he's riding and then stuff that he's like, Oh, I think that's rideable. And I was like, Well. I don't know. I think Mace is there to help keep him in line with course selection and making sure it's good <laughs> for everybody. Yeah, yeah, no, I, um, I, I'm not gonna lie. There's times that I, I look at stuff and ride stuff out there, and I'm like, you know, I wrote it, um, <laughs> so maybe we should race it. But no, it's it's gonna be rideable, uh, for for. You know, back back half of A's is always like if you've never there's in that that is something that should be said is there's probably going to be a lot of there's no way of us really knowing at this point, but um, I would assume there's going to be a lot of non series racers out there. So first time hard enduro racers coming from this this whole area is just um, full of of people that like to ride hard trail and love the Moab area and are stoked that this is happening. So um, all those guys, I'll throw a warning out there and just say, if you can't, if you can't pivot, turn zap and splatter on command, like at a decent level, you'd probably have a bunch of fun on the B course. Um, you can race whatever class you want, but um, the pro A splits are 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 hard. Like they're not going to be easy. There's um going to be a lot of. But that being said, I, I'm trying to keep it open. Like the, one of my favorite, like every time I, I'm looking at canyons, new stuff, I'm like, man, this is one line. Like this is one spot. Like if the hardest part of the canyon is one line. That means it's not a very good canyon, like for racing. So right. my favorite ones out there, like I found one just a few days ago and I started cutting it up and uh, I was like, this is like, this is the canyon that, that is for hardened arrow. Like there's 20 moves in a row. There's two options. Both are identically challenging. Like there's places for people to move over places to sit. You know, there's spots you gotta back up into little areas or pivot turn and back up and hit a hit a run. But um if someone's doing that, you could be like, Man, this guy looks slow. I'm gonna go the other way. And like there's another option for you to do. It might be also like like I said, it's just as challenging or more. So, but that's what we need for um a multi lap race with uh such a varying uh, array of, of skill level, like um you know as the top guys come through uh they need places to go uh, right in those in those splits because just inevitably um the hardest sections are the are the narrowest it's just it's just the nature of of what it is like you know if it's too wide it can't there, there's there can't be uniformity at at 20 feet wide like you, right there's very few times that you can have a identical you know three foot undercut ledge that's like 30 feet wide and and perfect all the way across 
like yeah. where everyone can just kind of pick their own spot and, and go for it. But um, so I, 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 a lot of thinking, it's just like picturing, just picture me like by myself in the middle of this property, all alone, staring at the side of a hill. <laughs> and then hiking another two miles and staring at the side of a hill and then hiking back to the where I was just at and staring back at that same hill and going, okay, I'm going to go up this one. <laughs> like, and then repeat for like the last six months. So like, it's, it's, it's awesome. It's fun. I have a bunch of fun out there doing it. Like I love building the course. Um, but it's like, it's hard. Like I think about it a lot. Like what's going to be a good up, what's going to be a good down. That's the other thing is that I like to go up personally. Um, downs are just a means for going up. Um, so like, I want to go up everything and you can't go up everything. You got to go down something. So like, you gotta, there's hard decisions that have to be made out there. <laughs> Could you tell us a little bit about um, like the difference between paid and like just exposure? What are people going to expect? I've gotten oh, a yeah. lot, a lot of questions. Yeah. About this, yeah, that's, so. that's a good, that's good question. Um, yeah. So it's actually um, not, there isn't a lot of exposure. There's cliffs around. There's spots you can go off. You know, you can, the trails are, are, are ledgy. You can go off a ledge that it's hard enduro. You know, there's no danger signs. Everything's dangerous. That's kind of the rule of thumb. That being said, there's no like 60 foot cliffs on the edge of the trail. Like there might be one, you know, 30 feet over there. 20 feet over there but um i tried to keep it pretty safe as safe as i could possibly make it and josh came out um the the course director for us hard enduro just uh last tuesday and we did a a, a couple of days riding around the property and he was stoked about um uh, the layout how challenging it was and the fact that it was safer so, um, in my mind, when I'm doing, when I'm thinking about all this stuff, really, uh, I'm looking for inside lines. So I, I want it to be challenging. I want it to be hard. I want it to be racy with meaning that like, I want it, people to be changing positions back and forth, um, and being able to like make wrong decisions and, and get themselves in a spot and then getting back, you know? So I, to me, hard enduro is the, is the funnest when, you know, you you're picking through like there's big moves out there, but there's a lot of like, um, you know, if you can ride the high line across the boulder field, you save a bunch of energy. And if you can't do that, you're going to be smoked at the end of lap one. Like, and then you're just going to be in, in maintenance mode for your recovery mode for the rest of the race, you know? So, um, keeping it where skill pays the bills, but it's not like you're going to bend your handlebars 90 degrees down or rip the radiator off your bike when you make a mistake, you're just going to go shit. I just messed up big yeah. time. <laughs> like I'm going to be here for another two minutes and that guy I've been following and trying to get up to is gone. Right. And then you have a bunch of work to do. Yeah. So that's kind of like what I go for and, and, and making it. So, uh, inside lines are harder and faster outside lines are easier but time and energy consuming so um that's just kind of like the basic um idea behind this this race setup for me is just making sure everyone stays safe and the best rider comes out on top right i feel like it's i mean 
that kind of terrain or and i mean obviously you're working with what you got but king of motos kind of has that feel where of course it's hard and oh everything's dangerous and you can still hurt your bike but you know the the consequence of falling off a rock at king of motos to falling off and again jim did an amazing job of grinding stone and i didn't yeah. feel that way at race two or one i didn't do race three i watched it but i walked most of it and that had a totally different vibe to it as it should right with right. the level of people who are riding it but um yeah that one much more consequence and you are bending your bars to 90 if you don't make it at the top <laughs> yeah for sure um so it's just a different vibe and and uh there's a place for everybody in this series uh there's uh not if all races were the same it wouldn't be beneficial so uh, i thought there was a a spot for another race like this and uh um that being said too it's it's going to be easier to mark and stuff because of we do have dirt um one of the things that one of a direct pro quote from J josh when he was here was uh man i've seen like six kinds of dirt since we've been here and it's like it's true like you'll be in rock sections that are all rock slab rock moab-esque um stuff and then you'll be in sand and you'll be in clay hard packed dirt um like loose uh like loam on the side hills of the canyons in the shade like you'll be like pivot turning through some junipers in like loamy rooty soil that's really dark in color um it's just got a really big uh there, there's a lot of diversity in the terrain it's pretty it's pretty sweet nice yeah i think it's gonna be awesome stoked that you guys are doing it taking the time to put it on um what's been the biggest challenge for you with this first first year um well for me personally um i'm not very computer savvy um or like I, I'm an idea guy, but I don't know how to get to the finish line on the computer side of things. So having a, uh, being able to delegate and, and I just want to bring up Ride Moab Industries, um, which is a local rental tour company here in town that I happen to work for here and there, um, guiding and stuff. And they're close friends of ours, Tyler and Kaylee. And uh, Kaylee has been um, chef's kiss. Huge, a huge part. If you go on the website and you go, man, I didn't think Joe was capable of this. It's because I'm not. We're not. <laughs> <laughs> um, so being able to like delegate jobs and and keep a schedule going and um, make sure I have everything I need and all the ducks are in a row and you know, you, you, you get these lists going that are just huge things to do. Um, and I want to just like, you know, back to me sitting on a silently sitting on the side of a hill out in the desert somewhere. That's where I want to be. Um, but the hard part, that's the easy part. Um, I could be there all day, every day. And I'd be happy. Um, the hard part is making sure signups open at a good time, making sure uh, everyone's figuring out how to sign up. Um, like everyone's happy with all of the things and, and getting the vendors. Um, uh, and obviously Mesa has been like a huge help on that side of things as well. Like replying to emails and, uh, keeping everybody happy and, um, yeah. And on, 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 point you know and you know like i think um since we've been to a lot of the races we wanted to make this experience really good for everyone and com sign, sign up is confusing when it's your first time and we have a lot of local people or people from the you know colorado utah and you know sign up it doesn't really make sense if you've never done it so i put some tutorials on instagram and just i was getting a lot of similar questions so i wanted to make it helpful and get back to people and you know obviously answer questions when we knew them and i think all of it is really fun to have a team. Like I want to go stand in the outside as well. And my time is soon, but,
but also like I'm pretty good at the computer. So we've been tag teaming it. And and like he says, the Welches at Ride Mo of Industry, they're doing a ride on Thursday before the race. Um, just because you know you want to hit Pritchett, you want to hit all these cool rides, but maybe you don't want to race. Um, it's a perfect opportunity. Um, but yeah, it's been really cool. There's been a lot of learning, I think, too. I, you know, from the beginning, we wanted to get a jump on it so we weren't at the end scrambling and I think we did a pretty decent job with the help of Josh and Matt to understand what was needed and what we had to get done from you know an AMA standpoint and stuff like that um so yeah we're now we're, we're doing it yeah yeah it's basically rush <laughs> so you can get everything done and still be rushing at the end like <laughs> Like plan plan everything to be done five days early so you get it done on time. Right. Um, is it, kind of what it ends up being like. And and I was hoping, you know, one of the things that I've never been super pleased with was availability of information about the race format and things like that prior to the race. Um, did we do an extremely good job this year of providing that information? I mean, we do have the flyer out and like things aren't going to change at the end of the at the end you know days minutes seconds before uh the race um uh and that being said too there there'll be two riders meetings and and they'll be super informative and 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 uh and helpful on site like once we get there but um yeah it's 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 challenging this first year uh getting exact mileages down is is really just not an option um that being said i'm working really hard to have it's supposed to be premier rounds only this year for onyx to have um like a full 3d map of the course but i'm working really hard to have that available for our race including a spectator loop on there and uh uh, the full race course down to like different checkpoints because there will um something we haven't mentioned before um there will be a lot of checkpoints probably at, at the very least six uh, checkpoints out there and you know if someone isn't finishing because there will be a lot of people out there in a and in you know b and c that aren't making the full three or four laps and are timing out at six hours and um for those people uh you will be scored at your last checkpoint so it'll be the number of laps you've done and then the last checkpoint you got to at six hours is how you'll be uh how you'll be scored and um yeah, yeah. which is normal but <laughs> worth saying um, I did want to also say the flyers here, it's online. Um, the location is on here as well. Um, when you put the location in, make sure you just stay on the main road. Don't go into Strike Ravine um, if it wants you to. It's just a little note. It'll be fully set. It'll be, there'll be, yeah, there'll be arrows and everything like that. Um, we also want to talk about the pro purses and um, a lot of people who've donated so many great things we're going to have probably the plushest giveaways of the series. Awesome. Someone, someone should compete with us on that. We have obviously climb who's killing it. They're, they're the main reason we're here. Like you said, IRC tires, there's going to be tires given away pretty much like B and C class um, random as well. Like we'll just do 10th B you're getting this. IRC also put down a thousand dollars for the amateur women purse so those amateur women will be um, walking away with some cash, which is cool. Pro women, Louise Forsley just signed up. I am so excited and I'm sure there'll be many more um, $2,000 women's pro purse and then $5,000 men's pro purse. Um, we also have Cycra giveaways, uh, SXS skid plate giveaways, crosslink components, trail bound, Rocky Mountain ATV and RMI, as well as um, KTM of Grand Junction. So we're going to have a lot of great things. Um, we're probably going to do a raffle and we'll have our own. And um, Motorx too. Oh, and Motorx, sorry about that. Um, and we'll have our own little tent. 
We'll be selling liquid death water snacks, um, t-shirts, buy these t-shirts, please. And um, we're going to uh, give away a lot of the profit that we make from that tent. So the snacks, the t-shirts, the stickers, all that stuff to some people who are really needing it in the community right now, like Cole Cherick. Um, there's some other things happening in the East Coast. We want to support some riders that Matt Adams is passionate about and just kind of give back to the community. So the more of these t-shirts that you take away, the more money these guys get to get their full recovery, um, you know, hopefully bringing them back, walking, riding and racing again is like the goal here. So um, that that's our goal. And there'll be a donation box if you want and you don't have to, but um, we just, we wanted to make it really, really good for everyone out there who's going through a hard time. Great, that's amazing. Who, uh, one more question that I was Ooh. curious on. Who came up with the epoxy uh, broken parts trophy idea? That's me. Yeah? Yeah, I love it. I'm um, I'm an artist now. Um, <laughs> and what a learning experience. You know, it has to be the perfect temperature, perfect everything. We are almost done. I can't believe it. There was times where Joe asked me, like, are you going to be able to finish that with your job? And I'm like, I have no idea. I don't know. But I'm get I have little kids once, every kid's getting a trophy. Every kid's walking away with a trophy. Two people are walking away with new stay six. First, second, and third. For all 14 classes we have, um, that's a lot of trophies. That's a lot. Um, and also it's really cool because people have, you know, like um Nick Pooch sent me a package of broken stuff. Um <laughs> Ash does dirt bikes, package of random crap. You know, you could get like spark plug from Cody Webb's bike in yours and you'd never know. And like, also we're just recycling things and making it cool. Hopefully you can hang it on your wall and you'll enjoy it. We just want to do something different. Yeah, nice. Yeah, they're yeah. cool. They're <laughs> cool trophies. There's people are going to be like, the only thing that's weird about it is like, there's ones that I definitely like the best and everyone's going to have that themselves. But it's going to be like, man, I want the... I want the cool one over there. Like, unfortunately, you'll get the one that you get, but um, <laughs> there's a lot. There's so many like cool. They're all so different and, and creative. It's pretty, pretty rad. Yeah, I recently put some handlebars in there. I was pretty excited. Some like cases, really, really messed up parts that everyone in, in town had broke, including us. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be pretty cool. You can inspect all the damage through the clear epoxy. <laughs> awesome <clears throat> anything else you can think of um you want to get out um i guess one question i had on friday are you doing signups all day all evening kind of thing like check-ins and then can you check in or sign up saturday morning or is it closed on friday it'll be open for an hour on saturday morning um i wanted to make sure that was uh the case just in people coming in late you know people coming in but it, it, i think it's 12 to 6 on friday yeah um 12 to 6 uh p.m and then an hour so let me think here so it's uh the race staging starts at 9 a.m on saturday i think that um i think it's uh seven to eight if I'm not mistaken, that it'll be open for like last minute, um, like check in sign rider sign up. Right. Um, yeah. And if you want to come early on Thursday night and, you know, spend the night, you absolutely can. The, uh, Rob our awesome landowner will be taking $50 a night for camping for that night. Um, obviously the Friday, Saturday and Sunday are free, oh. but, uh, just so you know, if you're coming in and you really want to find a place, there's plenty of BLM around, but you know, you don't want to unload and reload, but he, he'll be there. Um, we'll have a bunch of porta potties. Um, we are not allowing any more cancellations. If you do want to cancel uh, because you're hurt or, or anything else, we have canceled many people. So we're trying to be fair with this, but you can give it or sell it to someone else and they can take your race entry. Just shoot me an email and I can switch it out with Mike, the scoring guy. Um, it's just too close to the race. So we're, it's just causing madness. So yeah, we wanted to be as flexible as possible and we hope everyone understands. 
yeah i mean that's i think that's pretty much it i'm uh i'm really looking forward uh to this uh to the race and um it's it's gonna be a fun i think it's gonna be fun for everybody i think some people are gonna be humbled um with uh like new new to hard enduro racers um which is always the case and uh i hope they take that in the best possible way and uh you know to me that means going oh i gotta go home and start doing something i gotta i gotta get on the enduro method program i gotta um uh, i gotta start you know practicing my zaps in the backyard like where do I find a big tire that I can like drag into my yard and like make my neighbors super happy? Like, you know, whatever that means. Yeah. Um, but. And like getting on the Cody Wed training program that's, you know, partnered up with Enduro Method, all that stuff, trying to make your riding better. We're just super excited to have all of that support. And obviously, I mean, I want to get better. I'm doing it. Um, you know, yeah. there's, a, yeah, there's always humbling moments out there, right? You know, when you realize like, oh shoot, I need to make a friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's another thing uh, to all those, those people out there is like, you never know who you're going to be next to when you hit that hard section um, and you need a, and you need a pull. So uh, everyone just be nice to everybody out there. Uh, um, and, uh, and yeah. Yeah. Have fun. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I think it's like with Cody's program, the thing's really cool. I've hopped on and looked at it. And it's one of those things that's such a great place to be able to have a reference because, you know, you can go watch a video. You can take something away from it. Usually there's so much information in a video, especially a tutorial, that you take like one thing away and you go out with that thing in your head and you practice it and it takes a little bit and you finally get that done. But you can go back, watch the same video and pick up like the next thing and then implement that. And then oh, the yeah. same video, like six months later, you might go back, look at it and you're like, oh shit, there's one more thing. And then, you know, over time, eventually you get to a point where you think you have it mastered, but then it's a different situation, different rock, different side hill angle. And it's a completely new obstacle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's pretty rad. I, I haven't spent too much time looking into it, but uh, um, I definitely plan to. And I think Cody's, a good guy and um he shouldn't be it's not fair that he's good at dirt biking and he can do that stuff like has the personality to do that um i don't know uh, what the deal is but um he's he's got it all yeah <laughs> right on well i'm super excited stoked you guys are doing it i think it's going to be an amazing event looking forward we got well about two weeks Yep. Two Come weeks. On. Yeah. Well, this next week is, is all, um, you know, buttoning all the sections up. Uh, I'm trying, uh, my hardest to be, uh, not no face slappers. Hard enduro shouldn't be hard because you have to duck every 30 seconds. Um, so I, I'm trying very hard to cut as much as I can and uh make it so it's like open and like not I I just really dislike that. I want everybody to walk out with like non rib jerseys. Um <laughs> all those lazy course workers out there. <laughs> uh start cutting more because I know it sucks, especially those stupid prickly little spindly stick bushes. That's like 30 minutes to cut one, but you just got to do it. So, and the, and the junipers don't, uh, you think they're going to move and then you hit it and it doesn't move. Oh yeah. They're yeah, no. <laughs> and then cutting it, like, it meant, like a lot of this is hand cut. So like if you're out there and you see a 14 inch, you know, juniper cut, just know that, you know, I'm, I'm getting an ab workout from that out there. Like, <laughs> double handed on the on the on the little tiny saw just like for 20 minutes like just barely squeaking through it um so uh yeah next week this next week will be me cleaning everything up buttoning all the sections and then start arrowing we got our box arrows today we're gonna have um uh like 
all the arrows will be the same for the whole course, which uh, isn't always the case. And I like it when you can know like spectator course, one color, Saturday, one color, Sunday, one color, all different, um, all like the same. So that's something that I personally was uh, really stoked about was like just consistency in the course markings and um, having everything be make as much sense as it possibly can. So um, yeah, then that last week, we're just going to be, you know, yeah, sun up, sundown, arrows, stakes, staples, bloody fingers, all for all for you guys. So well, looking forward to it. Cool. Cool. Us too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, if anybody's got any last minute questions um, or needs a little more info, where can they get a hold of you? Yeah, we're pretty good at getting back on Instagram. Um, yeah, I look, I check that like every day or so, trying to get information out. Uh, people love to email me, so keep up the good work. Yeah, if you need questions answered or you could watch the enduro method podcast um and <laughs> they'd have to he listen to this to hear that yeah <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah moab hard enduro at gmail.com moab hard enduro on instagram uh those are probably the two best places and to get hard enduro.com yeah there's the theme but uh those are the best places to to get in contact with us and ask questions about camping race course any of that sign up stuff awesome well appreciate all your hard work and um yeah thanks for taking the time to come on here and tell us all about it. absolutely thanks josh <laughs>